Okay, everyone. So the last video is the state application on the binary dependent variable model. Um, I did replicate the I did replicate the example that we had on the textbook. I did just took the data set and then I tried to get I got the same table. So it's about participation. Just called it participation. Okay, so the data is available on the author website. Actually, I, I called it participation because they call it a very weird name. Uh, you know what they call it? It's, they call it M-R-O-Z. I tried to figure out what is MROS. I have no idea what is MROS, so I decided. Uh, most likely they have some abbreviation for something, but I couldn't figure it out, so I just called it participation. I, I, I renamed it. Uh, as you can find on the starting of the example on page 593, they are telling you the name of the data set. And if you want to get the, da the, the data set, you can go to the author website of the textbook and you get it for free. Um, to make your life easy, I'm going to post it on CourseWorks. So, uh, so I, I did just rename it instead of M-R-O-Z, I call it participation. Okay, so let's see. For the estimation of the model, LPM, logit, and probit, the LPM is just a linear model, so just a regress command. Uh, for the logit, instead of REG, you put logit, probit, okay? And as you read in the example, they have a robust standard error, so I added the robust standard error. So most likely they did the heteroscedasticity test and they found there is um, a connection between the variations in any of these regressors or some of these regressors or all of these regressors and the variance of the error term. So that's why they, they adjusted for the standard error used. Okay, uh, so what I have here is the fit statistic. So if in, in case you want to find the statistics of each of these models, uh, then you just type fit statistics or fit stat. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I don't know. Let's start from here. Okay, and um, let's start from the linear probability model and fitting the statistics. So what we have here is just the regress command. And what you got here is exactly the same coefficients that you have on the first column of table 17.1 on your uh, textbook as you can find that the r square as given on the table that you have is um, 0.264 so this is what you have on your textbook okay and um, all the coefficients that you have here you analyze it exactly the same way that you used to do with the regress command or with just an OLS so nothing is new here um, the fit statistics would give you more statistics. So let's say the log likelihood of the model versus the inter uh, the log likelihood uh, um, the log likelihood function with the intercept only, and the log likelihood with the full model. You can actually use these two numbers. I'm sorry. You can actually use these two numbers to compute the pseudo r square, as I give it. I gave you actually the uh, uh, formula in. Um, in class okay uh, you have also the likelihood ratio test and its probability the likelihood ratio test I gave you the formula and it's a chi-square distribution so the p-value can also be uh, computed and you can just look at the p-value and you understand that there is no consistent there is a zero probability that the model with the intercept only is equal to the model with uh, with the log likelihood uh, uh, function with the full model Okay, so remember the likelihood ratio test is taking a difference between two things, between the log likelihood uh, uh, function in which I have only an intercept versus or minus the log likelihood function which I have the full model. If this one, if this model with the intercept only minus this model in which I have um, everything, like all the regressors, um, is equal to zero, this is going to be your null. If there is a zero probability that they are the same, then this is another way of saying that the two models are not the same. There is a high probability that these two models are the same, or you are basically rejecting the null 
uh, hypothesis, there is a small probability that the difference between these two models is equal to zero. Okay, uh, you have the R square. Actually, because this model is a linear, so the, you don't have here a computation of the pseudo R square yet. So this is the R square in the adjusted R square. In a large sample, the difference between the two, like if you approximate this one, it's going to be almost the same. Uh, AIC and the VIC, these are two statistics and their adjustments. These are two statistics that are um, related to the standard error of the model. I'm not going to cover this here, but most likely you will cover it next semester. So um, those are uh, other additional statistics that I'm not going to cover. So let's see. If I want to estimate the model with the likelihood function, um, likelihood function use the I'm sorry with the logit model which use the maximum likelihood function then it keeps going into iterations until it tell you okay this is the likelihood uh, function and um, all of these coefficients are the coefficients that you have in your textbook okay so you can compare them uh, you can also uh, find the pseudo r square I gave you in class, the McFadden's r square, which is the pseudo r square. It's adjusted version. I gave it to you in class, right? We also did the count r square. There is a 73.6 percent um, probability that I have the y's equal to one. Okay. And uh, what else? You have the likelihood ratio test, seven here, because I have seven coefficients of the seven regressors. This is your restriction, and you have zero probability that the model in which I have intercept only is equal to the model in which I have everything. Okay, so again, all of these coefficients, you're not able to analyze it. You, I mean, in terms of magnitude, you can analyze the statistical significance, but to analyze the impact of any of these variables, you have to plug it inside the uh, CDF, uh, I mean, like it's for this one, the uh, logistic distribution function. Uh, and then the same thing here, so with the probit model, okay, you get all of these coefficients, you can analyze statistical significance, you can analyze the signs, you can fit the statistics, you can have all these statistics that we uh, we like uh, we talked about. Of course, there are other things, uh, so I just gonna stress on the ones that we did in class. Okay, so what is and this one I just replicated the question that you have on your textbook. What is the effect of the increase um, in the number of kids who are less than six from zero to one? So, woman, uh, the woman did not have kids less than six, and then she has one. What's the difference? And I used the probit model I, in order to be able to compare the results with the ones that you have in your textbook. So just pay attention. Okay, so I have a probit model. I have everything. I just copied and pasted this one. So it's exactly the same. I just put it back here. And um, we're going to be comparing two values of this model. Uh, the first one I called it Z1. You can call it anything. And scalar is going to give you just one number. And this is what we want. So Z1, I, I decided to call this Z1, in which I have the female has one child. And I decided to call this, this one Z0, when female has zero kids, less than six. Notice everything else is held constant. 1, 1, 20.13, 12.3, everything else is held constant, right? And these numbers are the means. So you can find it in your textbook. Actually, in your textbook, they are giving you these numbers and they are telling you these are approximately the means. So I just put them here, okay? And you will find that in the textbook, they didn't give you this number for some reason. Probably the, the author forgot to give you this number. So I computed it and I mean like I just... Um, typed summarize and then I was able to find the mean for kids greater than 6 less than 18 to be 1.4 in this sample so I put this 1.4 so when you try to replicate this one I just took just this exactly the same numbers that you have in the paragraph uh, under the table uh, towards the end of the page and you will find all of these numbers or you can just generate the means okay I will ask um, 
I will ask Raimondo to show you how to, instead of writing just the numbers, you can just mean education, mean experience, mean experience squared, and so on. Okay? So you can either plug in numbers or just type the word uh, mean after, after you generate it for each value. Okay, so let's come to the most important part. So I want to display the probability of labor force participation okay, of the female with kids less than 6 equal to 1. So I need the normal probability distribution, the phi of Z1, which is this one. So you get this number and you want to, to do like the integration of all the area under the graph that is equal or less to Z1. And then you're going to do the less than uh, equal to zero. So you get this one and you get the normal probability distribution of it. After you display these two numbers, this is what matters. What is the impact of a, a one unit increase from zero to one of kids less than six? And you will get the answer right here. Okay, so let's see this one and then we're going to do it for the logit regression. So let's see. Uh, first of all, okay, so they do, you do the regression of the probit. We display these and we get the difference. Okay, so this is the output. The probability of the labor force participation with kids less than 6 uh, equal to 1 is 0.3704. This is the probability. And then, uh, so if the, the female has one child, that's, this is the probability. What if the female has zero? Then it has to be the case that the labor force participation is higher, 70. What is the difference between this number and this number? Then it's computed right here. Okay? You will find exactly those three numbers uh, on the page of your textbook, the last paragraph of page 594. These are exactly the same numbers. You can actually repeat it because they have actually repeated in your textbook the following page. They have repeated this one when they plugged here two, one. Okay, so you can just repeat, just copy, paste, but make sure that you change the names. So probably call this one Z11 and you can call this one Z00. So don't call the same name for the scalar because uh, it will tell you that you already have it. Okay, so then the, in the textbook they didn't do the logic, so I just did it in order to see, um, in order to show it to you. So again, I have a scalar, which is just one number. Uh, for the same regression, I just copied and pasted the same regression from the probit. I put it right here. I just changed the name here, okay? Um, everything is based on the, con the coefficients of the logit model now. And then just notice the main difference, the logit and the probit. I have the logistic distribution function 1 over 1 plus the exponential of the minus of this value and the same thing here. So I have two values and then I'm taking the difference between the two. Okay, so when we run this part, when we run this part, okay, uh, we get almost the same number, right? So it's it's 0.34 and the other one is very close, 0.33, okay? So the difference in the probability is using the normal distribution for the additional, for one additional child, it's not one additional, it's from zero child to one child, less than six years of age um, is 0.33 in the probability and it's 0.34 in the logit model, okay? So this is an example of how it's done. The next thing is, as I said in class, we can compare, I just chose an example, okay? And this one is comparing nested model. What is the meaning of nested? Like, this is a big model, right? And actually, um, okay, so let me have, just let me remove this from here, and let me have it here. It's actually less than six. Okay, so this is the main model. Okay, and uh, so this is the main model, right? And I'm going to say, okay, you can think of it as the big model, 
versus a small model. In other words, I don't have those three regressors in the model I'm comparing with. And then I want to compare the statistics of these two. Okay, so I want you to note, to note something important. In the class I told you, this one is going to be called uh, fit statistics save and then fit statistics difference. But then when I tried it on my version, which is version 15, I don't know, it didn't work. So I tried um, a different uh, uh, way of writing it. And it said, like, I saved it into a model called zero and a model called, uh, and then and then I, I, I used this model zero. Okay, so the main big model is saved under M0. And then I run a smaller model and it's nested because it's a subset of the big one right and I said fit the statistics of this small model using or comparing it with the large model that I decided to call M0 you can call it anything so let me show you this uh, so just uh, try the one the the, the the commands I gave you in class if it didn't if it doesn't work then just do it this way okay it kept giving me like an error message so just Okay, so this is how it's done. So you, you do the regressions, okay, and then you compare two models, the current and the saved. I want you to understand that the saved is the first one because I did save it. So the save is the big one, and then using uh, or the small model would come on the first, which is the current. Okay, and then what you care about is this one, right? So let's say count R square. The current model, the small model, were able to count 69.6%, but this one counted much higher. So that means using the saved model, the large model has a higher impact. Or in other words, the difference between these two is negative. So I prefer kind of the big model. So this is the big model, the large model. And you can do the same thing with every other thing. Notice that if I'm comparing these two models with the intercept only, the difference is zero. The log likelihood function, right? It's the log likelihood. If this number is bigger than this number, right? Then in other words, the likelihood function of this one is bigger than the likelihood function of this one. In other words, I prefer the big model more than the small model. Okay? So you can also compare the McFadden's. Uh, it's higher here for the big model, the saved model, the first model. And the same thing for the adjusted one okay so not to get confused just notice the saved is the one I decided to save which is the big mod all right okay so um, that's it for for uh, the videos I'm going to ask um, Raimondo to show you how to do this we can extract the means instead of just writing like a number we can type mean of uh, N, Y, I, and C, for example. I can also, instead of this one, type mean of education, but I have to generate it first. So I will ask uh, Raimondo to show you this during the coming uh, recitation. All right, I'll see you next Wednesday.